Hi, welcome to the solution of exercise two. I already put it in a file and now we will go over it together. So first we have to get the user's input for three different numbers. And here I did it in one single line that get the input as we learned it in exercise one and it will return a string. So we have to convert it to integer, to a number. Therefore we pass the output of the input function directly to the int function and con do the conversion. So in the variable n1, we receive an integer number. And we do that three times. So we have three different integer numbers. In a, a later exercise, we will also take a look how we can handle invalid user input. So the user could basically enter anything he wants here. He could give us a string too, and then the conversion to a number to, to an integer will fail. So we have to do something more there in the future, but for now we will just do it like that. We, we will just assume that the user always enters a number. Okay. Then we initialize, that's the word, we initialize two new variables here with zero. So our largest and smallest number will be zero for now. That's how we initialize it. It's, yeah, it's just to, to have the variables on the scope here. Scope means we can access them. Maybe more about that in a later exercise. Okay, so we have our three input numbers and now we compare. That's the comparison operator and it checks is number one greater than number two and is number one greater than number three. If that's the case, we execute this part of the code. If it's not the case, we will check this condition. And again, if the condition is true, we will execute this part of the code. If it's false, we go here. So else is what happens if no other condition before becomes true, then we go here. And yeah, that's the if statement. As you can see, you can, you can have several branches of the code and one of the branches will be executed. So here we have three different branches of our code and only one of these three will be executed depending on the conditions we have here. Yeah. So if number one is greater than number two and number one is also greater than number three, we go here. If this is the case, that means that number one is the largest number. So we assign the value from number one to this variable largest. We store the value of number one there. We could also put or here just that you see that it doesn't make sense logically, but syntactically it would be correct. So there's and and or in Python. You can use both. Here we need the end because yeah, it wouldn't make sense otherwise. <clears throat> the number one has to be greater than both other numbers to be the largest one. And then we have found the largest number already. Now we know that number three and number two are smaller than one. So one of those two will be the smallest number. And again, we have an if else statement. So we check is number two greater than number three. If that's the case, the smallest number is number three. And if not, the smallest one is number two. And the same thing happens here and here again, depending on which number was the greatest one. And the exercise says we should print out the sum of the largest and the smallest number. Here's an error again, have to fix that. So largest and smallest, these two variables. Here we store the largest and the smallest value now after executing 
this if code. So here we compute the sum of the two numbers and directly print it out to the console. As you can see, we can put a function into another function and then this function will be executed and the output of the function is passed directly as input to the next function. So that's similar. Here we first we compute the sum and then we print it out directly because it's inside the function call of print of the print function. Okay. So now we have to run the code. First we save it. Uh, I'm on a MacBook, so I use command S to save and then function F5 to run the code. And here you see it. We enter the first number. Number one is one, number two is two, and number three is three. So our smallest number is one, the largest one is three, and the sum of one and three is four. It works. That's our solution for exercise two.